On the wall is a print titled The Fall Two by Sandy Williams IV. This photograph is sized 22 inches by 17 inches unframed and 25 inches by 22 inches framed in a white frame. It's an archival inkjet print. In the picture, you see a hand holding a wax sculpture of the Lincoln Memorial in front of the actual Lincoln Memorial. This series depicts wax sculptures melting in front of the monuments they were made after. In the image, the candle is lit and there is a fire where the head of the candle once was. Below the fall is the Wax Monuments No. 5 by Sandy Williams IV, made in 2022. The Wax Monuments sit on a pedestal that is three feet high. Four wax candles sit on an antique silver platter. The platter is decoratively engraved, 23 inches long and 10 inches wide. The candles range from 3 to 5 inches wide and 5 to 10 inches tall. These candles are modeled after popular monuments in U.S. history, including the Lincoln Memorial and the Confederate statue of Robert E. Lee. They depict Lincoln seated and Robert E. Lee on a horse. The candles have been lit and have melted down indicating the decay of memory over the passage of time. The artist created these candles by 3D scanning the monuments and then casting them. The work is meant to be transformed with fire. This visualizes how permanent monuments still stand, while others hold a record of monuments that have recently been taken down. The work is titled Fans and was made in 2020. This work is 48 inches tall and 26 inches wide. This rug is black with a decorative motif that is culturally symbolic of Islamic prayer rugs. The bulk of the decoration is a floral motif embroidered with white thread that forms a three inch frame around the edges of the rug. Inside the frame, a mirab opens out into the image of the Kaaba. The mirab is a central feature of architecture in Islam and is found in many mosques. It has a niche shape and is significant in prayer, orienting towards the Kaaba. At the center of the inner frame, a petal-shaped medallion with ornate details unfold and flourish in perfect symmetry. Three vegetal ornaments sit on the bottom corners and center of the frame. Between the Kaaba and the medallion, a thick embroidered patch of bright red with bold block lettering in white reads most supreme. This reimagined prayer rug by Samira Idrus is part of her ongoing series, Music is My Sanctuary. In this rug, called Fans, you see most supreme written in red and white writing, which is iconic of the hip-hop brand Supreme. In the Islamic religion, there are 99 names for God. The most gracious, the most merciful, the king, so on and so forth. The most supreme easily fits the format of the names of God. To the right of fans hangs another rug by Samaria Idrus from the same series. The work is titled The Greatest and was made in 2020. This work is 48 inches tall and 26 inches wide. This rug also features a thick frame of floral motifs in white. Lotuses sit equidistant from one another between sweeping palm fronds, stems, and branches with smaller flowers. The frames are contrasted by a chain-like outline on its outer and inner edges. The inner frame also features a mihrab, an abstract typography that reads Allah. This prayer rug also has a double meaning. The abstract Arabic calligraphy at the bottom reads the word Allah, but if you turn your head to the side, you will see four swooshes that are iconic of the brand Nike. In this way, the artist is making a commentary on mass consumerism, brand loyalty, and religious fanaticism. This sculptural installation by Suchitra Matai is called a Yakshi Chronicle. 
It was made in 2021, and it was inspired by a trip the artist made to India 28 years ago. The artist is of Guyanese descent, but of Indian ancestry. Upon her trip to her ancestral motherland, she found a Yakshi sculpture. Yakshis are nature deities in Hindu mythology and religion. She 3D printed this sculpture over and over again. These replicas are near perfect. The print is made to look like a solid stone statue, but it is light and made of plastic, resembling a plaster cast. This installation is 63 inches tall and 26 inches wide. There are three rows of three. The bottom right sculpture is painted in an ombre from hot pink to light pink. Each sculpture to the left is covered in gold leaf. From the top left, the sculpture is almost entirely white with gold leaf at the bottom. The one next to it has a little bit more gold leaf and it increases in levels of gold leaf until the very last pink sculpture. In this way, Suchitra is commenting on replication and authenticity when it comes to religious objects. She's also commenting on the degrees of separation as we move away generationally from our ancestral lands. By painting the sculptures with gold leaf, the artist is showing a gradual transformation while maintaining the sculpture's connection to the past. This video installation by Leila Weifer is a 13-minute single-channel experience recounting the relationship between God, the church, and a queer black child. The work is titled Play, Pray. The film explores the playful impulses, innocence, and underlying violence implicated in the experience of queer black children in the Christian church. The film builds a spiritual narrative that contemplates the structures and rules imposed on pleasure, play, and sexuality under the rigidity of black Christianity. The film takes inspiration from four lyrical sermons from James Weldon Johnson's God's Trombone, Seven Negro Sermons in Verse. The film features an original soundtrack in collaboration with KYN, Josh Casey, and Yari Bundy, and vocals from Sandra Lawson Ndu. The film is recorded in the artist's childhood church. It is vibrant in color and rich in symbology that is connected to the Christian history and faith. The film features two gender-fluid Black adults collectively and individually performing acts of play and pray. In one scene, the two adults stand in front of a vibrantly stained glass bowl and take turns teaching one another how to pray. One clasps the other's hands together, guiding them to gently close their eyes and bow their head, and then they switch roles. The voice of a young child says, bow your head, close your eyes. In another scene, the characters sit in the pews and play patty cake. One person is positioned with their back to the camera while the other faces it. They are excited and gleeful. Violet, blue, and pink light engulfs the scene. As the child's voice orates a sermon by James Weldon Johnson, near-transparent video of the mirror image of the scene appears. At once, we can see the game of patty cake from both characters' perspectives in real time. The film moves quickly between scenes of joy, struggle, and serenity that underlie the complex experience of coming to one's queerness within the context and culture of the Black church. This work by Kelly Sophia Maksud is called Of Gods and Land. It is 96 inches tall and 18 inches wide. It looks like a scroll and is embroidery and graphite on paper. This particular work is first hand-drawn and then hand-stitched. The stitching is done in multiple colors of earthen tones, with a focus on the phrase, God save the queen. The work is interspersed with English and Swahili phases. It is part of an ongoing series called Anthems, which explores national anthems that were composed and adopted in African countries post-independence. It investigates the relationship of church and state and the inheritance of colonial rule. Of Gods and Lands is meant to be seen on both sides. On the front, you will see neat stitching that composes the musical score, 
while on the back you will see the rhizomatic structures that indicate the impact of colonial rule and language on the psyche of a country. Songs of Lament Ceremonial 3 This installation by Shelley Ball lays on the ground. The work is composed of several white figurine candles that were mass-produced and then arranged in the outline of a female figure, about five feet tall and about a foot and a half wide. The installation is composed of approximately 96 candles, which are each about 10 inches tall. Songs of Lament Ceremonial 3 is a memorial to an earlier work by the artist. The memorial reincarnates an earlier work that examined the fate of religious iconography in a contemporary consumer culture. These objects are modeled on Devdasis, ritual dancing girls who resided in medieval Hindu temple complexes. The arrangement of the numerous mass-produced figurines into a life-sized female form suggests that images of devotion in one cultural context can transform into craft or fine art objects in another. The works also reference the commodification of the female body through multiple cultural contents, including the historical transformation of the Devdasi tradition into a form of indentured prostitution. On the wall to the left of the installation is a tablet. It plays a series of slides that describe the artist's interdisciplinary project, Songs of Lament, and is overlaid by an audio. There is a picture of the former artwork of red candles, which was destroyed earlier this year in the artist's studio. There is then an image of the new artwork and the artist engaging in a performance where the candles surround the artist's head like a halo. The slides go on to describe the ongoing continuation of this project. Like a flower she blooms for me, it is 30 inches tall and 20 inches wide, made of oil, graphite, and pastel on canvas. The work is mostly monochrome and earth colored with fire and water in red and in blue. The painting is rendered in the artist's signature grayscale Mughal style of illustration. The self-portraits show one figure nude and another in Western-style clothing. Like a flower she blooms for me shows a figure on the bottom kneeling on top of a floor printed in graphite flowers. She's clasping onto the thighs of the top figure, whose feet seem to at once sit atop and flow through the bottom figure's legs. The feet are elongated, depicting a unique perspective. The top figure holds a burst of flames in her clenched left fist, which she raises beside her head, as if preparing to throw it. Above her, a dark storm cloud billows and spirals, and raindrops flow down in vertical lines. In the background is a ring of red fire, and underneath that ring of fire is a pool of water. The figures exist at odds with one another as they go between realms of the elements, seeking confidence in their physical body amidst a religious upbringing that catalyzes shame. Au revoir is a sculpture that sits on top of a pedestal directly below Like a Flower She Blooms for Me. This ceramic and resin sculpture by Sunny Bukhari is 16 inches in diameter and 4 inches tall with a lip that is 2 inches wide. The structure looks like a pool and has tiles that are reminiscent of Islamic architecture. In the pool is resin, which indicates water, and in the resin are several small knives. The ceramic tiles feature symmetrical geometric shapes in blue and green that are outlined in white. The work incorporates recurring themes of water and knives that are prevalent in Bukhari's practice. The water refers to the practice of ablution, which precedes prayer, as well as the act of cross-oceanic migration. In this case, the artist migrated from Pakistan to the USA a few years ago. The knives indicate protection, as well as the desire to sever ties with patriarchal social norms. The water is meant to be pacifying and soothing, while the knives indicate that this space may not have always felt safe for the artist. <laughs>